Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tony Gapasone. I am the founder and executive director of Brave Maker. And I'm here to do a special two cents edition. These two cents videos are where I take kind of a big idea and share a short thought around it. And today I'm doing this specifically for a Brave Maker who happens to be in South Africa, which is really, really cool. And uh, she presented me with a bunch of questions about. So this is for an aspiring film fest organizer in South Africa who said, hey, I stumbled upon Brave Maker. I would like to do some of the same things that you are doing. And um, can you help me? And normally I'm like, Sh you know, sure. Let me just type up some responses. But because there were so many great questions, I said, let me do a video for you. That way we can also use this for anybody else who's in, you know, interested in possibly doing a film fest yourself. So I'm going to present the responses. You know, I am uh, a self-taught, you know, film fest organizer as well. This isn't like I, you know, am super, you know, professional in the sense of I have tons of experience. Uh, I have three years under my belt of trying to do this. And we have had, you know, some failings and some learnings. And so in the next 10 minutes, I hope that what I share here could encourage you as well as encourage um, especially our brave maker in South Africa. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so number one, the question is, what advice would you give me when, uh, for um, a realistic time frame when starting a film festival? Making sure I can host all the artists, uh, have the guests, uh, have security, all that kind of stuff, as well as deal with COVID restrictions. Okay, so now, I, I don't have the answer for uh, every single film fest and or for you because I don't know the details. So I could only speak from my experience. But what I would say is a good year is recommended. Um, if you were to do something, you know, kind of small, like, you know, in a cafe or in somebody's home, you know, and it didn't require a huge high bar, then you could do something probably like within a month or two time, right? But I guess I'm, I'm thinking about if you were to be creating and crafting this film festival experience for a good number of people, like 100 to 200 people, you know, minimum, then I would say you really need to spend your time doing the planning, gathering your team, finding the right venues and partners. And we're gonna chat about that because fundraising is a huge part of this as well. So don't, um, don't shortcut yourself because those things are really important to make sure that you are able to get all of the resources that you need. I'm gonna show, you know, this is the video right here of our 2019 recap and you can watch that at another time. Okay, so the second question is so okay, question number one, time frame. I'd say depending on what you know bar of quality you want, one year, nine months, six months, maybe. Okay. Um, what is it better to do it virtually, number two, or to do it in person? Again, I don't know the the terms and regulations that you are dealing with in South Africa or wherever, whoever's watching this. So thinking about 2021, when I am recording this, we are currently doing a hybrid for 2021. We're having some in-person, hopefully drive-in. We're still trying to figure that out as well as doing a online version. And we're doing a pitch festival and some other things that people can participate, but it's all gonna be virtually and online via Zoom as well as this platform that I'm using here called StreamYard. How would you go about running this festival uh, virtually? Well, you need a lot of tech support. You need web presence. You need lots of volunteers. You need people to host panel discussions, people to do marketing. That said, volunteer, 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 build your team. It is extremely, extremely important that you have a good team of people. We have about um, you know, a core of people, I'd say about 10 who are really strong, who are really committed and active. Uh, and then beyond that, there's probably like 10 or 15 more people who are uh, volunteers on different levels. So to host the film festival, whether it's in person or online, you just need a solid core of people who believe in the vision, 
and can help you. You know, you're watching the video right now of our in-person event and, you know, you're seeing our different presenters or even seeing some of the filmmakers as well as some of the sponsors. It is a, you know, it's a large, like we have photographers that are there. We have people who are running all the behind the scenes stuff. You know, we had partnered with News Up Now and Dig In Magazine. Uh, indie film hustle all of these great people came and we had cyclismo cafe we rented out cinemark theater you can see all of these things that are happening here it was you know no easy feat to to do that so i just recommend that you know you spend as much time as possible building that team because you will not be disappointed when you have a good number of people to lean on and give people specific roles you know give people a programming role give people uh, a tech role a marketing role the public relation role a social media role really have that defined you got to think of yourself like a company because that's really what you are if you're creating a film fest that is going to be you know a high bar and again i'm thinking about that's going to host 100 at least 200 people people you're going to be showcasing uh, sounds like for our specific brave maker in south africa they're doing some films as well as live art and art exhibits which we did too we had virtual or uh, visual artists share their work in you know uh, paintings in the venue that we were in and it was really phenomenal so fourth question is funding should i get funding before i start inviting filmmakers <laughs> Uh, it's hard to answer that question, but yes, uh, funding is super important for this event that you just saw on screen, which was our 2019 version of the festival. We had raised about $40,000 for this event. That's a lot of money to um, put into it, but where did all the money go? Well, uh, venues, travel, food, marketing, production, tech responsibilities, gear, swag, buying uh, things to give the filmmakers, all of our merchandise, the investment, you know, lighting, director's chairs, rental fees. There's so many things that are required for the funding and, you know, ticketing sales, are not going to do it as well as your submission fees that's it's not going to cut it you're going to need a whole lot more of support and sponsorships and funders and it's going to be slow painfully slow and difficult people don't want to part with money <laughs> easily right but they need a strong vision if you are starting this film festival people want to see your passion and it's going to start with you film fest organizer uh you are going to be the one who's going to sell this to the potential sponsors because they're going to look at it as potential uh, partnership to do good in the community but also to get their name out and they want to believe in people who are trustworthy and they want to build a loyal partnership so it's really going to be a heavy burden on your shoulders it could be done but i'm still doing it and we're not turning profit from this we're we're, we're truly doing it because we believe it's the right thing it's my calling particularly i love helping artists because I myself as an artist. So don't get in it to make money because you won't make money. The way that our organization makes money currently is by doing video projects, by getting corporate gigs in which we can uh, charge fees for our productions or for our, 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 our time, our, our public speaking, that kind of thing. Doing film festivals is not a lucrative business. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. So question five, have you asked artists to submit their work through a social media page or, or a website? How did you do it? We use filmfreeway.com. They don't pay us to, to say that, but it's great. And they make it very easy and they take a portion of the submission fees and it's really great and easy to do. We gave people a year uh, or nine months to start the, the film um, submission process and I highly recommend their platform. It's um, something that most huge film festivals use. So check it out. We received 120 film submissions our first year, which is great. Besides the costs mentioned above, what else should I keep in mind regarding the festival? Uh, you need a good website. You need good web presence, good social media presence. You need to be thinking about you know the, the venues that you will be using and who those partners are. I think I already talked about being aware of travel. If you're going to bring in a lot of film festivals do not provide uh, stipends. Some do. You can decide what you want to do. So those are, those are things to keep in mind. Also, uh, this goes into your question number seven. I'd say keep in mind, what is your vision for the festival? What is the theme? For us, Brave Maker, it is brave stories empowering underrepresented voices, justice, diversity, and inclusion. If you don't have a theme for your film festival, it, and it's just like 
any movie uh, that's way too broad. Every film festival has its flavor. Sundance has a flavor. Slam Dance, uh, TIFF, Can. All these film festivals are known. Austin, they're known South by Southwest. Look these up. They're known for having a particular a bent to them. What kind of films they program, that's important. You want your brand, your style, your tone, your voice, your mood of your film festival to be very clear so that people, film festival, filmmakers, potential submitters know what they're submitting to because not every film is the right film for your festival, right? Unless you're trying to be super broad, but I would say a broad vision will equate a kind of muddy experience. You want it to be really specific as much as possible. Number eight, um, how could the festival be successful and generate its own income? Again, this comes down to your partners. Uh, most festivals don't make money. Uh, you, you know, you're 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 doing something on blood, sweat, and tears. I know that's not always easy to hear, but um, do your best to, tr to try to make it something in which you can pay all the bills, and that really comes with paying the bills from um, donor dollars. Okay, if you can get people to support your vision make partnerships with people like Sean McCarthy and Gorilla Wanderers and Cinemark Theater or wherever, make good partnerships. I see um, Carl, thanks Carl for jumping in and I hope you continue to learn. Carl is a, a, a new Brave Maker volunteer who's been joining us, which is super exciting. But again, to my Brave Maker in South Africa or, or any aspiring film fest organizers, it's really hard to define success as financial return or financial gain. I would say success for me, the way I define it is, am, am I supporting filmmakers? Am I elevating filmmakers who wouldn't otherwise have a place to share their film? And am I doing good in the community? Am I making good partnerships? That's really why I started Brave Maker is I wanted to help artists and I wanted to impact my community. I've been to Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah for eight years in a row. I loved it. I wanted to take a little piece of that, bring it into my own community where I am in the Bay Area. And so therefore I started Brave Maker for that reason. Help artists do good in my community. That's how I define success. And the very first time we did it, I felt like we were successful because artists felt empowered and good. And people often asked me before I was launching this, do we really need another film festival? There's so many film festivals out there. And I say, yeah, based on the fact that we got 120 submissions and how hard I know it is, because I'm a filmmaker myself, how hard it is to get into a film festival, how many rejections I had, I knew we needed another film festival in the world and we needed another film festival in my city. So to my South African sister who's asking about starting a film festival, do good in your community and help the artists in your community start there. And the great thing is when you do that, you can also meet and launch a bigger vision. Something that I learned in this film festival experience was that I was able to help more people and connect with more people than ever before based on what we did. Because now COVID has launched us into this online platform and we're growing our YouTube page and we're able to do a whole heck of a lot more. And it's just, it's really, really exciting. So success needs to be defined by you, not just in finances. And last thing, please share any advice that you might find helpful in planning and hosting the event for me as a first time host. <sighs> it's a lot of hard work. Uh, have a good plan. Plan out month to month. I'm somebody who loves tasks and to-do lists. I'm a creative person who loves you know playing and imagining, but you also have to have strong administration skills and a good team around you. So get the right people to help bring your vision to life. Get people who could be just as passionate as you. Uh, you're going to have to turn a lot of people away because the people get in it for the wrong reasons. They're um, maybe not the right fit or they're toxic or they, they, they talk a lot, but they don't follow up. You got to cut those people off. It's hard. It's really, really hard, but that's just all part of this process is finding who the right partners are. And when you do, you will feel invigorated and you won't feel exhausted too much although it's exhausting to do anything creative but it's, it's worth it if you believe in it so have a good plan find the right people 
Look for the right community partners. Try to be mutually beneficial with your partners too. It's not everybody gets tired of people asking for money. Give me money, give me money, you know, fund my dream. Fund. But if you can say, here, here's the vision that I have for this film festival to support artists, to bring these stories into our community. Here's why you potential uh, sponsor or corporate donor would want to say yes, because it will be mutually beneficial. You will get something too. It's not just you giving us money, but we can do something good together. That's where I think sometimes we forget when we ask for money. It's not just write me a check. It's how can we partner? How can we link hands? How can we make this community better together? And that's all I have. I would really appreciate uh, if you're watching this video and uh, a potential film fest organizer that you follow us on our website, sign up on our newsletter. It's at bravemaker.com. And we are a 501c3 nonprofit. The only way we do our work and survive month to month. And when I say survive, I truly mean survive. Uh, we aren't you know a huge organization that has tons of money you know just flowing out we are truly a a frugal organization that is scrappy and passionate and making it work month to month and we have to find many different ways many different revenue streams to make it happen so if you are inclined to become a monthly supporter we've got i've got a, a person who gives five bucks a month 10 bucks a month 25 bucks a month 150 bucks a month these supporters help us do this work, help us create space for strong, brave storytellers. And we would love you to join us. Go to our website, bravemaker.com slash buzz to get on our newsletter and you'll get free films. You'll get stories that I share on a regular basis. You'll meet filmmakers. You can uh, also follow our like and subscribe to our podcast, the Brave Maker podcast which is right there on all podcast platforms or go to our YouTube page and you can watch those podcast conversations live. We would definitely appreciate a uh, follow and a subscribe on our YouTube page. And that's all I got. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. Again, I'll try to uh, do anything else I can uh, digitally and online if there's any questions that people have about starting a film festival. And if I didn't answer all your questions and you want to message me more, go for it. I'll uh, do my best to get back to you. All right.